Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I am doing a first impressions or sort of a little mini review on this absolutely stunning mini capucines from Louis Vuitton. So if you wanna know everything about this bag and how I've been loving it over the last, oh, just about month and a half, to, oh, close to two months, then stay tuned. So here are so basically the, the crux of what we're gonna go over today. We're gonna talk about what I like to call the anatomy of the bag. So I'll give you a little description of the bag, you know, the particulars, the dimensions, the tour of the bag, things you kind of need to know. We're going to go over potential wear and tear that I might have had over the last, like I said, close to two months worth of wear. We'll talk about what fits in the bag and we'll talk about some pros and cons. And finally, I will let you know do I think this bag is worth it? Would I buy it again? All those kind of things. So let's get started with the anatomy of the bag. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and I love to do videos on luxury handbags, shoes, ready to wear. I like to do some styling videos and I do those things from the perspective of someone who is in the middle of her life as well as someone who is mid-sized. So if that sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would join us here. Click the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you know every time I upload a video. So as I mentioned, this is the mini Capucines bag from Louis Vuitton. The Capucines, I think, currently comes in three sizes. So it comes in this mini size. The next size up is the BB. And then I think there's one more size and I can't remember if they it's the PM or if it's an MM now. I, I can't remember. I think there used to be yet another size, but I think they discontinued that. I do believe actually that there was one that might be even smaller, kind of like a nano size. I don't think they produce it very often. So the dimensions of the mini Capucine are 8.3 inches across the bottom, 5.5 inches across or from bottom to top, and 3.1 inches in depth. So it is a mini bag, as you can see, and then you can see it's got this top flap on top, we do have four feet on the bottom, which is very nice. And then we've obviously got this top handle. Now this is rigid. These, this does not move. It doesn't swivel or anything like that. There are a few different versions of the mini Capucines bag that are out right now. There's this version and where the D-rings for the strap, which is right here. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, the D-rings that you, oh, and I still have, <laughs> the Dale's Addiction handbag hook in there. So anyway, these D-rings that you hook on the strap to on this particular style, as you saw, are inside the bag on a diagonal. Some of the versions that they have out now actually have put the D-rings on the outside, like right here. That is my personal preference. I obviously didn't have a choice. It's not like I could have picked from this bag with this version versus the other. I'm not quite sure why they choose some to make it with the D-rings on the outside and some on the inside. If somebody from Louis Vuitton wants to let me know or if one of you happens to know why they do some one way and some the other, I would, I would curious minds would like to know or inquis, what is it? Inquiring minds would like to know. Anyway, so as you can see, it's got the LV on the front here and that is coated in both the uh, leather as well as gold. And then like I said, you've got that top flap. Now, the one thing about this flap is that you can either wear it inside the bag like that, or if you want to cover up that LV and be a little more discreet, you can wear it out like that. And so you just have the little flower emblem there. As you can see, it does have two compartments and then it has this little, hopefully you can see this little kind of tab there, or I don't really know what to call it, but it's basically, that's what holds the flap in. Although it honestly doesn't need it. I, I frankly think it's kind of extraneous and unnecessary. But back to the interior of the bag, as you can see, it says Louis Vuitton made in Paris, I'm pretty sure, or excuse me, made in France, because uh, I think all the Capucines are made in France. There is one slit pocket in the back here that I have yet to use. And like I said, it is divided in the center by this one compartment. 
moving on to the strap. This is also done in my particular one in the ostrich leather. It's got these beautiful gold, you know, lobster claw, oversized lobster claw clasps. Does it say, yeah, it just says LV right down there. Some, some of the ones I think say like Louis Vuitton there, but this one does not. There does not appear to be any branding here on the actual buckle. And obviously you've got several adjustments. There are five, double check that. One, two, three, four, yes. So there are five adjustments that you can see here. There's one that you cannot see. So I have it set on the second to longest setting for me to wear a cross body. Obviously if I put it on the shortest one, it would be good for shoulder carry. And if you are taller or you know a little more curvy than I am, then you do have one more hole if you wanna use it cross body. All right, so let's talk about what this bag holds. Now, it's a mini bag, you guys. It's not gonna hold the kitchen sink. It's not even gonna come close to holding what's on top of the kitchen sink, okay? It's a mini bag, but you can really get your essentials in it. And I find that I have no problem doing it. So basically the way you need to sort of work with this bag, because it is, as, the, uh, as my friends in the UK like to say, it is a little faffy or a little uh, futzy, as I would say in Yiddish. But basically the way it works is if you've got a phone case, and this is my extra phone case. By the way, this is what I was talking about the other day. This is called the Octabuddy. And basically it allows you to stick your phone. These are like little suction cups. And it allows you to stick your phone on like a window or a mirror or some kind of smooth surface to obviously take pictures or to film. And before I was able to get back into our apartment and I had forgotten to bring my tripod, which is what you're sitting on right now, I uh, was very happy that I had ordered this because I needed it. Cause otherwise I would have had no place to put you guys <laughs> to film before. If you have a phone, this is the 14 Pro size, not the Max. I do not think that the Max would fit in here. It slides right down into that back pocket. And there is, you know, more room if you wanted to stick something else in there. Here is my, and I apologize guys, because I don't have anything else with me here besides what I'm showing you, but this is what I have been carrying and I've been carrying this bag a lot. So this is my Lisa wallet. Like I said, I would say that this is comparable to the Chanel flap card holder or the snap card holder is what it's called. It's very similar in size to the Bottega flap card holder as well. You know, it's definitely bigger than just like a flat card holder that you might have. So, you know, I would say that this is pretty, I don't wanna say bulky, but you know, it's not the tiniest of SLGs, I guess is my point. Now you can put it upright like that if you want, if you've got some other things that are taller or whatnot that might wanna sit in there, or you can, you know, lay it down like that. But even when this is standing up, like so, I can still get the flap closed like that. So you do, because of sort of the flexibility of the flap here, while it's kind of annoying at times, it does give you some flexibility and kind of some wiggle room as to what you put in there. Okay, so if I was doing that, I might then also put my beautiful Louis Vuitton clay or key pouch from the Christmas animation this year. And as you can see, that kind of tucks right there. But I can also do it where the two are laying down, kind of one in front of the other. So you can also see what that looks like. And honestly, that's usually how I have those two things in there. I don't always carry my key pouch with me. And then here are my AirPods and they tuck down very nicely in that little slot there. Here is my Hermes lipstick. That is what I am wearing today. It is just as a reminder, Rose Zinzolin is the color. So I just realized in doing that whole thing that with this lipstick, I probably wouldn't put it in the front. So I think what I would probably do is move my clay to just in front of my phone. So hopefully you can see that there. So my phone's here, the clay is here. Now I've got a little more space to work with up here so I can pop that in there and that sits very nicely. So I've got my Lisa wallet, my AirPods, my lipstick, and then like I said, very easy to just throw these kind of on top. 
So I just kind of tuck those on the top there and then you can put the flap down and that's what that looks like. Now that's probably more than honestly I would really carry in here. I probably wouldn't bring my clay with me. Honestly, I don't bring it that much or I'll have this in here. If I have my phone, generally I'll have my phone in my hand. So a lot of times I just then stick the sunglasses down in that back compartment because they fit, you know, really nicely in there. If I wanted to do that, I could then, you know, throw the clay on top of that. And that frankly fits, oh, definitely, I think, you know, better. And most of the time I'm filming, so I have my phone in my hand regardless. Now, I do have my mini pochette accessoire here. I would never put this in this bag. I do think you can get it to fit, but there's no reason to. You're, you're gonna eat up any room that you have in this bag with that pouch. So let me see if I can even, yeah, actually, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even think you can really get it in there and I don't frankly wanna force it. So a pouch this size is not really gonna fit. It might fit up in this front compartment, but again, once you get that in there, you're not gonna have room for really anything else. But let me, I will try for the sake of the video, guys. I will see if it will fit in the front. No, it's, well, ooh. I felt, I felt like I was Cinderella putting a, one of the stepmother's shoes. So yes, you can force it in there. I guess if I was doing that, I would probably have to go with then just like a flat card holder in the back here. But again, this is a very big waste of space. So wouldn't particularly use that. All right, moving this along somewhat quickly because I am rapidly losing light here. Let's talk about any wear and tear that I have on this bag. Like I said, I bought this in the very end of September. It is now essentially very end of November. And, you know, I'm looking it over. I don't see anywhere on the corners. And because this is the mini bag, I don't think that you're really gonna see any structure loss. If you look on the pre-loved market, you will notice that some of the larger capucines start slouching a little bit, sort of like you see a Birkin start to kind of slouch on the sides. And that I think is because of the heaviness of the leather, the Terillion leather that they use, which is I think a calf or anyway, whatever, is a pretty thick, heavy leather, but I'm looking at the hardware. I don't yeah. see any scratches. I did have some stickers on here that I took off a little while ago, but like I said, I don't see any, sorry, I was just looking for this strap. I don't see any wear and tear on anything. i um, just looking to see if I see any scratches on the lobster claw clasps. Nothing, nothing that I can see. If you are looking for an exotic that you can actually use as an everyday bag, I would highly, highly recommend ostrich, you know, croc, alligator, even lizard or python is not gonna be quite as hard wearing. You'd probably be okay with lizard, but python, you know, the scales tend to lift. And so I would not use that as an everyday bag. But this, like I said, I have used it a ton, both crossbody and as a handheld bag and it's wearing like iron. So last but not least, let's talk about the pros and cons of this bag. The first pro, it's gorgeous. I mean, you cannot deny how absolutely stunning this bag is. I mean, it, and it's not just that it's in ostrich, although I think that certainly helps, but in this size, in the mini size, they are just so cute. They are just, absolutely adorable and you know handheld carry and crossbody i mean it just it's perfect no matter how you wear it so i would say first pro it's just beautiful and adorable the next pro is the versatility and how you can wear it like i said i used it the other night when david and i had a date night and i carried it hand carry but most of the time you know 90 95 percent of the time i'm carrying it casually crossbody with jeans, with my puffer coat. I mean, you name it, 
that's how I've been wearing it. So I think the versatility of this particular bag and in this particular leather, especially in this color, I think is a huge pro. It literally goes with anything. The next pro I would say is for a mini bag, it holds a decent amount. It, it you know, it doesn't hold the kitchen sink, like I said, but you wouldn't expect a mini bag to hold the kitchen sink. So I think for the size that it is, like I said, it carries all of my daily essentials. I can get my phone in there, I can get my card holder or Lisa wallet, I can get my sunglasses, my AirPods, a lipstick, and I'm good to go. Like I don't really need anything more than that. So for me personally, I think it fits a really good amount and I think that's a huge pro. All right, let's talk about the cons. So some would say, and I would probably agree, that this flap, especially in the mini size, is a con. It gets in the way. I mean, there's no two ways around it, you guys. You cannot get into the bag unless you move the flap out of the way. So that in and of itself is annoying. The second thing is this divider. No reason for it. Absolutely no reason for it. Louis Vuitton, and Chanel on the mini cocoa handle, get rid of the center divider. It does nothing but make it harder for you to get into the bag. It makes it so you can carry less. There is no need, get rid of it. That being said, unlike the mini cocoa handle, I can get my phone in this. And you guys, this is why I didn't buy this bag for the longest time. Uh, in addition to, I'd much prefer to buy it in France where I get a much better price on it. But I didn't think it would carry, that it would get my, I'd be able to get my phone in it because that's why I ended up selling my mini cocoa handle because the only way I could get my phone in it was to take my case off. And then even then it was super tight trying to get my phone into that bag. As adorable as I think that bag is, I love the mini cocoa handle. It is so, so similar in style to this, you know, similar shape, top handle, cross body, the whole thing flap, but this just, this you can get your phone in and I have absolutely no problem getting my phone. And this is actually a rubberized case, so it makes it a little bit harder usually to get this kind of, you know, it's got, because it, it sort of sticks to things, I guess is my point. So, but it would be a heck of a lot easier to get everything in, especially because this handle is rigid. And I guess maybe that's another con is because the handle doesn't swivel at all. You, you have to be sort of a contortionist <laughs> to get your things in and out. Now, does that, was that going to deter me from the bag? Obviously not because I bought it and I've told you all that I <laughs> probably not be my last. So yeah, I would say, honestly, those are the only cons I can think of. Maybe a con on this particular bag would be where the D-rings are to hook the strap. My personal preference would be the ones that have it on the outside, just because I think it's easier. I My least favorite way of having a crossbody strap is that diagonal thing. It's like, you know, the Lady Dewars are that way. And that's one of the reasons why I really liked the, um, the new 9522 bag is because the way to put the strap on was on the outside of the bag. So that's why I liked that bag so much. Now that bag is super expensive and it's also very heavy, but I digress. So I guess for me personally, that's a con, but I don't know that everybody else would feel that way. So last but not least, before I lose my last <laughs> bit of light, would I buy this bag again? Do I recommend it? Do I think it's worth the price? All of those things. Let's start with do I think it's worth the price? I absolutely think that this bag is worth the price if you can get it in Europe and get the VAT back. Because I don't know that I would spend I think, what are they, 93 50 something like that for the ostrich in the United States plus tax. So I'm looking at this bag in the United States, in New York at, you know, probably 10 2 something like that to buy this bag new from Boutique. And, you know, while I don't want resale value to rule my decision of buying a bag, it definitely enters my mind. And most of you will know that the Capucines does not hold its value like other bags and like even other Louis Vuitton bags for that matter. 
which is so interesting, right? Because this is their flagship bag. Like this is their Birkin, this is their Kelly. Like, so it's very interesting that their flagship bag does not hold value on the resale market. So given all that, I think that this bag, if you are going to buy it new, is worth it if you can get it at the European price minus the VAT because the savings that I got on this bag was huge. So if I remember correctly, guys, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but I think, cause I don't have my spreadsheet pulled up here, but I think when all was said and done, I paid about $6,300-ish, you know, after the VAT back, after the conversion for this bag. So I essentially saved almost $4,000 on this bag. Do I think this bag at $6,300, especially in ostrich, is worth it? Hell yes. <laughs> Hell and a yes, I absolutely do. I think it is stunning. I think it is worth every penny of that price. If you are looking for a, you know, sort of a regular one in the Trillion leather, definitely look, take a look at the pre-loved market. You can definitely find some pretty good pricing on those bags. You can definitely find amazing pricing if you are open to getting one of the bigger ones. The minis definitely hold their value better than the BB or certainly the PM or the MM, depending on how old the bag is. So like I said, if you can buy it in France and you want it new, go for it. If not, I'd probably look on the pre-loved market. Next, would I recommend it? Yes. I think this bag is stunning. And if you like this style bag, if you like a top handle bag that you can also cross body and it looks great both ways, this is your bag. Like it is stunning. And I don't think that you can go wrong picking this up. Which leads me into my last question, which is would I buy it again? And that again is a hell yes <laughs> if I was in France. So as you all know, uh, I do have some credit sitting at Le Bon Marché that I would very much like to use on another mini capucines bag. So if I can get back to Paris in the next basically five months or so, I would like to take advantage of perhaps buying another one of these and saving not only what I saved before, but saving an additional like 700 plus dollars on it, which would make me very happy. So yeah, I I would 100% get another one. Would I buy one from the, you know, flagship boutique on 57th and 5th? Probably not. I just, now that I know how much cheaper I can get it for in France, and because of where I live now, I can get a very inexpensive plane ticket to Paris. <laughs> I would say I would not buy it here. It, it, again, it would not be worth it to me. I don't think, like I said, that this bag to me is worth over $10,000. Would I say it's worth $7,000, $8,000? Probably yes. I, I would spend that in the United States, but I wouldn't spend over $10,000 on this particular bag. I just, there are other bags that I would probably buy. I'd buy another Birkin or something before I would spend this much money in the United States. Now, that being said, if I see something that's absolutely stunning, <laughs> that I, you know, my heart just like starts singing opera to, you know, don't come for me if I actually buy one in the United States, but I would certainly prefer if I buy another one. We'll go with if slash when, because that's my good luck. So if slash when I buy another mini capucines, I would prefer to do it in, uh, in France. But yes, now that I have one, they are like Lay's potato chips and you just can't eat one. So a hundred percent, I would buy this again and I plan on doing so. So that's it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this little kind of first impressions, mini review of the mini capucines bag in the ostrich. Let me know in the comments below, do you own a capucines? Do you want a capucines? Is it something that you aspire to adding to your collection? Let me know all about that in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help the YouTube algorithm. And if you can help me out by subscribing, you guys, a lot of you that watch my videos, so many of you that watch my videos, definitely more than half, and watch multiple videos over and over, 
are not subscribed to my channel. It just takes one second. It's free. It means a lot to a content creator to subscribe to their channel. And as I mentioned, I am trying to get to 3000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I basically have a month left and I have a very, very special unboxing to do once I hit that goal. So if you can help me out with that, I would greatly appreciate it. Click the subscribe button down below and don't forget the notification bell, which will let you know every time I upload a video. If you haven't had enough of me yet, I will pop another video up here for you to watch and wherever you are I hope you are having an amazing day or evening and I will catch you in the next one bye guys